Hi, this is Dale Buchanan, the host of Puppy Talk Podcast. Before we get started today, I wanted to let you know of my new book, The Complete Puppy Training Manual. It's available on Amazon in four formats Kindle ebook, paperback, hardcover, and audiobook. You can find it on Amazon right now. It's called The Complete Puppy Training Manual, and I will put a link in the show notes of this episode. I'm Dale Buchanan, and this is Puppy Talk, the podcast that offers advice on how to raise a healthy, happy, and obedient puppy. This podcast is sponsored by Top Gun Dog Training. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast now so you don't miss a single episode of Puppy Talk. This is episode number three of Puppy Talk, How to Potty Train Your Puppy. I use these six tips that I'm going to teach you right now with all of the clients that I work with that have young puppies. Potty training is one of the hardest things for some owners to do. And what I've found of training so many puppies in my career is that the owner either has it or they don't. And another thing that I want to mention, potty training is an owner responsibility and an owner issue. The puppy doesn't really care where it goes potty. It just knows that it needs to eliminate. So it doesn't care where it is. It doesn't care if it's on your floor, on your carpet, on a pee pad, on your driveway, sidewalk, or on grass. I train puppies to go potty on grass. That's the most sanitary place. That's the best place for them to go. And that's what I work with. Now, there are some trainers that will teach the puppy to go on pee pads. I just don't believe in pee pads. I think they're disgusting. I think training your puppy to go inside the house and then trying to transfer it outside to grass is a big mistake. The reason is because you're teaching your puppy to go inside and then you have to teach it to go outside. Now, I have a mini Australian Shepherd. She's 11 months old. Her name is Dixie. I got her when she was 10 weeks old in May of 2020. The first night I had her, she peed in the house right next to her water bowl. After that, she never peed in the house, and she never pooped in the house. I managed to take her down a hallway, down an elevator, through a parking lot, onto the grass, and the very second day I had her, I taught her how to go potty on the grass. And the way that I did that was... I praised her when she went on the grass. I went, per, took her on the grass and I said, Dixie, go potty, go potty. Good girl, go potty. Good girl. And when she peed, I praised her. I, in fact, I threw a party. Some of my neighbors were watching and they were throwing a party with me. And this was great because she associated right away that going potty in the grass was the right thing to do. Now, when I got Dixie, the place that I got her from gave me pee pads. I threw them in the trash the second that I got home. I never used them. And I don't recommend anybody use them because it just creates a lot of problems. So let's get into it. Six steps to potty training your puppy. Step number one, your pup should always be supervised or confined. And this is the reason why I recommend crate training. So the method that you want to use is keep your puppy confined in a crate And then you take it out, walk it or carry it over to the grass, set it in the grass. If it doesn't go potty, you bring it back in, you put it in the crate. Some clients that I work with have to do this for 7 to 10 hours in a day, constantly. Crate, grass, crate, grass, until the dog understands they're going to go in the grass. Now, some dogs might go in the crate, but I don't recommend at this point that you put any bedding bed, nothing in there. It's just a black piece of plastic that's the the uh, removable piece under the crate is the only thing they have and a chew toy because the puppy will, will not eliminate in the crate if it's the right size and if it's do- there, there's no bedding in there. So you want to make sure that the crate is just big enough for the puppy, no bigger. Otherwise, the puppy's going to go potty in one corner and sleep in the other corner. So you take them from the crate, you take them outside, And then you have them go potty, and they come back inside. Now, you don't have to use a crate. 
I know that some owners don't like using crates, and that's okay. It's just going to take a little longer for the potty training to be in effect if you don't use a crate. So what do you do if you don't want to use a crate? You have to keep the dog supervised, the puppy supervised, on a leash next to you at all times. If the puppy has free reign of the house and go anywhere they want, they're going to go behind the couch, over to the corner, in the kitchen, anywhere else where they can go potty and nobody can see them. They're going to do it nonstop. And then after two or three days of that, they have developed an association that going inside is the right thing to do. So you have to keep supervision of the puppy with the only exception is if they just went outside and peed and pooped, you can bring them back inside. They can have a little bit more freedom. But the more freedom that you give the puppy during step number one, then the more chance that they have of making an accident inside the house and it's not the puppy's fault. So step number two, take your pup to the right place as often as he needs to go. For young puppies, you know, 8 to 12 weeks old, this means basically the first week you have them every hour and even in the middle of the night. I know for Dixie, I had to get up twice in the middle of the night. We went to bed at 10, I woke up at 2, and then I also took her out at 4 in the morning for the first week or two. A lot of clients have to do this. You take the puppy to the right place as many times as they need to go. Learn the pattern of your puppy. You want to make sure that you have a very strict schedule. Your puppy is in the crate or supervised. It goes outside. It goes potty. It comes back inside. It eats. And then it plays a little bit. And then it goes back outside. It comes back inside. It naps. When it wakes up from a nap, it goes back outside. Comes back inside. You play or do some training with your puppy. Confine the puppy, supervise the puppy, take it back outside. So every hour, hour and a half, you're taking the puppy outside to go potty. This is very important. You have to take it to the right place, and then you want to say, go potty, Dixie, go potty, and good girl, good girl, go potty. If the puppy is sniffing around, if the puppy is whining, or if the puppy is barking, it might need to go outside. It might be telling you it needs to go outside. And if it goes outside and it's on the grass and it starts making circles, or if it starts sniffing heavily on the grass, it's about to go potty. And then you want to encourage the puppy to eliminate right there. And that's the best way to get your puppy to go in the same spot or the general area all the time. Step number three, you have to reward your puppy when they're doing the behavior that you want. This is the basic principle of positive reinforcement training. The puppy does what you want, you remark the behavior, and you reward it. So your puppy goes outside, you say, Dixie, go potty, good girl, go potty, and she pees, and then you say, good girl, and you feed her, you feed her a treat, you say, yes, good girl, feed her a treat, and she associates that this is the behavior that you want, this is the appropriate behavior. You can also do clicker training here. You can bring the clicker with you outside. And when, the, when you say, Dixie, go potty, go potty, good girl, go potty, and she goes potty, you mark that behavior after she does it, and you feed her a treat, and then you pet her on the head, and you say, good girl, that's very good. Good, good girl, Dixie. Way to go potty. Now, that's the first three steps, and that should be taking so many people through the potty training pretty easily. But what happens with step number four is if you catch your puppy going in the wrong place, Here's what you need to do. You need to quickly interrupt that behavior. And the sound that I like to use is a ah, ah or a clap, a loud, ha a, loud ha a loud hand clap. And then if you interrupt the behavior, let's say you see your puppy going about to go pee and it's squatting down. You interrupt the behavior and if it, it hasn't relieved himself yet or herself or just a little bit, you interrupt it. You pick the puppy up, you bring immediately outside to the grass, plop it on the grass where it's gone potty before, and you say, go potty, go potty. And then when it's gone potty there, you praise, give a treat, mark the behavior, and so forth. Now, what happens if the puppy's already relieved himself? This is still step number four. This is the second part of it. 
if the puppy has still is already relieved himself and he's not going to finish outside, you do nothing. You do not do anything except confine your puppy right away and then you clean up the mess. Do not yell at your puppy. Do not rub the nose of the puppy into the urine or the poop. Do not do anything. Do not get frustrated. Do not get upset. You clean it up and you work on your timing the next go around. But keep in mind, every like I said before, every time your puppy has gone potty inside the house, the more they're going to associate that going potty inside the house is the correct behavior. Step number five, never scold your puppy after they mess. He will not learn anything from that. That is an after-the-fact correction, and it will make him nervous or fearful. And this makes training very difficult and sets it back. You do not want to yell at your puppy or get mad at your puppy. And another thing, too, I have a lot of owners say, my puppy went pee in the house. My puppy went poop in the crate. My puppy did this because they're mad at me. You know what? Puppies don't associate that way. They don't think like humans do. They're mad at you. They're going to let you know right in the moment. They're not going to go off down the road in another hour and pee in the kitchen because they're mad at you for something, for not giving them a treat or not picking them up or not giving them attention. They don't live their life that way. Puppies relate everything to associations and consequences. So if you relate that the consequence of the puppy for going inside is bad, 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 then that's not going to help them learn to go outside. Because with positive reinforcement training, we focus on the result that we want, not the behavior that they're doing wrong. So if we focus all the time about them going inside and try to fix that, it doesn't work. We focus on taking them outside and having them go outside and learn that behavior and that association. Step number six, very important. Always clean up the mess with an odor neutralizer. This means that you have to have some type of Clorox. I use Clorox spray, which is an odor. It's very, very strong. It's, a, it's got some bleach in its odor. Neutralizer odor eliminator. Because what happens is if the puppy has gone inside two or three times, even on pee pads, if you started to use those and then you took my advice and threw them in the trash. If the puppy started to go inside then they're going to go to the same place that they went because they can smell the urine on the floor or in the carpet and they're going to go back there because they think that's the, where they're supposed to go. Remember that a dog's nose is the most powerful thing on the planet for them. Their nose is so strong, everything that they smell, they react to. So you don't want to have that smell of the pee or the poop in the house You want to neutralize that and use a a deodorizer to clean that up. There's a couple that are recommended. One is called Nature's Miracle, and that's a good one. So those are the six steps. Let's go through them again. One, keep your puppy supervised or confined. Number two, take your puppy to the right place as often as he needs to go. Number three, give your pup a treat immediately after he goes in the right place. Number four, if you catch your puppy going in the wrong place, interrupt him and take him outside. Number five, never scold your puppy if you find a mess after he is gone. Number six, always clean up accidents quickly with a a odor neutralizer. And like I said earlier, there are many ways to potty train a puppy. This is the method that I use. This is the standard protocol for potty training a puppy to go outside in the grass. And honestly, there are no excuses to take your puppy outside in the grass. You may be hearing from your vet, well, you can't take the puppy outside in the grass till it has all of its shots. That is some truth to that, but you have to be, you know, kind of compromised. You don't want to teach your puppy to go inside because that's going to be a nightmare down the road. So you take your puppy to grass that you know or you can assume is not contaminated. Because the things that the vets are worried about are parvo and other um, diseases and giardia, which is a parasite that the puppy can get in to their digestive system. Now, I know that 
Dixie, my puppy, had Giardia many times when she was very young. And I always thought it was because she was going in contaminated grass. She had it for many, many months on and off. But it wasn't the grass. I found out it was something else. It was, it was a bone that I was giving her that was contaminated. And you have to really look into things like this thoroughly before you assume one thing or the other. But after your puppy's 16 weeks old and they've had all of their shots, rabies, and they have had all of their boosters, you don't have to worry at all about the puppy going into the grass. That's just the very early stages of having your puppy. So you have to weigh the benefits, you know, and the consequences of everything that I'm giving you. Make your own decisions. Talk to your vet. Make sure that you have everything set up in place for your puppy to go in grass. Most people that I work with have yards. I don't have a yard. I have an apartment. So like I said, I had to go through extreme measures just, just to take Dixie out to the grass every time she potties, and I still do. It's not easy. I can't open up the front door and take her right out to the front yard and say, go potty. We have to go for a long walk before she can reach grass. And let me tell you, she's gotten used to that. She holds it. She doesn't have any mistakes. She never stopped along the way and peed on the sidewalk or peed on the, on the uh, street. And she's done you know, great with it because that's what I taught her from the very first day, the second day that I had her. So if you have any questions about potty training, reach out to me. Be sure to check out the website, topgundogtraining.com. Thank you for listening to Puppy Talk. Have a great day. This is Dale Buchanan, host of Puppy Talk Podcast. I have an announcement of a new book that I just published called Potty Training Your Puppy. It's available on Amazon in Kindle and paperback, soon to be available on audiobook. You can find out all the details of this book using the link in the show notes. It's called Potty Training Your Puppy. It's a comprehensive book with a simple and effective way to help potty train your puppy, and it really works. Check out the link in the show notes.